Rosalind Kind is a multifaceted artist, accomplished singer-songwriter and the talented younger sister of Barbara Streisand. Now, embracing the spirit of Valentine's Day, Rosalind has combined two hits, Look of Love and The Island, resulting in a medley that celebrates love in all its forms. And Rosalind is with us here. How are you today? I'm great, honey. Now, your latest project of course is a medley that combines Look of Love and The Island as I mentioned so what was it that inspired you to blend these two songs together? Well I'll tell you I used to sing for years I sang The Look of Love way back when by itself in my shows and I sang The Island at one point in my oh, shows wow. separately at different times different shows different lineups and then one time I was putting a show together a new one and I thought gee I wonder what these two songs I love them both it two of my favorites, uh, what they would sound like going together, because I love story songs. I love telling a story. Yeah. Painting my picture. You know, I like to have a scenario. And um, we tried it out, and it worked so well that I, I did it with just piano in the beginning, the trio, and then I said one day, you know, I really would like to have this fully orchestrated. Yeah. And then we accomplished that with my my record producer, Stefan Oberhoff, and um, and then I just did, recently did the video for it before, because I, I will put it out without a video. In these yeah. days, you can, you know? Oh, yeah. So I recently did the video, and it was such perfect timing. We, we planned, we were hoping... We be ready for Valentine's Day. And that was the inspiration because two of my favorite songs, sung separately, put them together. They worked well. And now with the strings and the French horns and everything, it's like, it's heaven and it tells a wonderful story. Absolutely. And you mentioned the video there. You both starred in that and produced it. So what was that like to wear both those hats? Well, it was my first time producing myself live, anything wow. live. Before my videos were all stopped footage that my record producer and I put together to fit the scenario of the songs. Yeah. This was the first time for me in both areas, producing and starring in my own video, because everybody said, why aren't you in your own videos? And I just never thought about it. I thought, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I look so good on camera. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, like, it's all those vulnerabilities that you go through, you know? And they said, no, you have to. People want to see you. They want to see you. So this is the one I decided to do it on. Yeah. And, um, and we had a fabulous time. I had a great team. You know, you always, it's never, no man is an island. And you have to put together a great team. And I'm one that wants a loving team that comes from their heart, that are filled with light. I don't want narcissists. I don't want bullies. I don't want people who think they're better than the next. I want cooperation, team, and love amongst each other. And that was what we got when I picked Monique Impagliazzo for my director. And she met, introduced me to to Malik Hanna, and I asked mm. Hope to produce with me. And then we had our DP, who they've worked with before, and he was a master. And then everybody else in the cast, I, I cast uh, the younger me, the younger lover, I cast the lover. They would they would filter out and then bring me the best choices, and then I picked. I was the last say. And I, you know, I, you know, you stay out of the directing because your director is your director. I've learned that in the business, you know. And if I have anything to say about what the actors are doing on stage, I will whisper in her ear, "Let them do this a little because I want a little more of this and I want a little more of that." <laughs> yeah. But but basically, you know, it's it's it was a, such a phenomenal experience, such a great learning curve. But I, I think it's also due to the fact that we had a wonderful cast, a wonderful crew, wonderful, you know, heads, my, you know, of my departments in each area, the cinematography and directing and my partner in producing. And, um, and Stefan and I, you know, we uh, produced the song. We, when we recorded it, he and I produced the song. And so it was just, it was lovely. I don't know if everything is lovely like that, but that's what I like. That's how I work well. And the song itself celebrates love in all its forms and emphasizes that it can be found at any age. So why do you think it's important to share that message? Because I think a lot of people when they get older, whether they've lost a significant other or they've never been married or had a relationship, and as they get older, you know, I, I'm a woman. I Sometimes you, you can feel that way. Mm. And a friend of mine said to me, you know, Rosie, that's such a great message. So many women will identify with that. So it's basically, I, I wanted to say that even over the age of 65, 
you can find love. Don't run away from it. And I also made a comment subliminally by the people that I put in my cafe scene. I had tables of people, tables of two. I had mixed couples. I had gay couples. I had, you know, I just wanted to say love is love is love. And everybody has the right to love whom they want as long Mm. as they're happy. If everybody were happy in this world and had what, you know, they wanted and if they could have find compassion and love and understanding, we'd have such a a better world today. Yeah. Absolutely. And not just this medley, but your recent work overall seems to emphasise themes of love and positivity. So is there a particular reason for that? Well, I'm, I'm very spiritual. And in 1984, going way back, when my yeah. career was going up and down and side to side, and I had just, um, well, separated in my marriage, and uh, I needed to find out why I was here. You know, you go through those things in your life where you question everything. And I started to question. And um, so I I went for a a past life regression to see if I could find my answers. Because I was reading a lot about psychic phenomena, life after death. I'm very much into the new age. I believe in other planets having population. And some of them are good and some of them, you know, I just, I've had out-of-body experiences afterwards. Because this was a time when I was really meditating a lot. And um, I went through my my life regression. It only took me back to one lifetime. When I was a man in Lemuria, which was like like you know, the West Coast answer to Atlantis. And I was a man with a turban. I had white pantalons and sandals and I lived in a stone hut. And I was having a duel over a woman I was in love with. And during the duel, the woman accidentally was the one that got killed. Oh, no. So supposedly, from what I'm getting from this, is I have been looking through many lifetimes for that love. Yeah. But in my word associations that they connect to the regression, it wasn't one-on-one love. It was universal. It was world harmony, peace, you know, coming together. So I learned in that regression that, you know, I was meant to heal, to bring people together, to bring hearts together, to make a better place. And ever since then, my path has been set on aiming my messages, even when they're pop songs that I do. It always comes from my heart. I don't sing songs I can't believe in. I don't like things that are trite. I like things that have a meaning and make people sometimes think. And yet I do funny songs and comedy and and all that too. But even in that, there's there's love. Do you think that that's a particularly important message these days, maybe after the pandemic? And I suppose there's always bad stuff going on in the world, but I guess there is at the moment as well. So (laughs) it's very important. Oh, yes. Love. You know what? Love as a spiritual person, everything begins and ends with love. You have to learn to love yourself because if you don't love yourself, how can you love somebody else? You've got to learn to to appreciate those who are different from you. Learn to welcome them and get to understand them. Share your differences so that you can have camaraderie and, and, and embrace the things that are similar. Because in the end result, we all want the same thing. And for your medley for the look of love and the island, did you have any particularly memorable moments when you were working on the project? Well, I know memorable. I know some the, the guys behind the camera when I kissed my leading man, they were like, "Oh my god, that was not directed." That was <laughs> like, and he was enjoying. I was enjoying it, and we just got, it just I I I got lost in his blue eyes, and, it <laughs> shut up. and I had somebody said to me, "Are you a real item?" I said, "No, we're acting." <laughs> no. It was a, a a piece, a story, and uh, and no, I, but you know, I have gone through things in my own life when I even separated from my husband and divorced, and we still love there. So even though we had a beginning that was one way, even though we separated, there was always going to be a connection. You Absolutely, guides you because you, you never forget the first love you know you never forget you know everything has a meaning and through every lesson we learn in life through love or whatever god willing we become better people for it now your career spans various categories if you like from entertainment recording you know broadway performances film and television so what was it that drew you to pursue such a diverse range of talents was that a decision or deliberate or did that just end up happening i think it's what comes your way. Mm. It's whatever comes your way. I started singing and I loved singing. Singing was my first my first love. 
But then acting came into it, television and uh, film. And uh, I have to tell you, I love one-on-one with my audience. I adore that. I love looking in people's eyes and seeing their reactions. I make them part of my show. I don't sing at them. I yeah. may, I, I'm inclusive. They're in my living room, you know, and that's how you touch people's hearts. But I also love the media of film and television. I, I had a great time when I was with ABC Paramount doing comedy. You know, it's like wow. when I was studying acting with Milton Gonzalez, he said, to me, you're so great at comedy. He said, I would love to see you do Antigone. So I had to do a scene in something I did and I had to pull tears and I was able to do it. But so I think, you know, it's inevitable. You're not always talented in every area, but you try. Yeah. And singing seemed to be something that was passed down in our genes because it came from our maternal grandfather to our mother, to my sister and I, and now to my nephew who's, who's out there and uh, making records and stuff. And uh, who's, who's wonderful and also a very heartfelt human being. Yeah. Um, but I, but the acting bug bit me too. I mean, it was yeah. fun. It was fun. I mean, I loved, I can't say that I don't enjoy this business. Sometimes you go through a lot of heartache and, you know, um, people don't want you or this and that, or, you know, part wasn't right. Or But when it's right, it's right. And, you know, I'm lucky to be a person who, when I do do it, it's something I love doing. How does your approach to performing differ across those mediums? Well, obviously, when I'm working to an audience, I am hoping no matter how big the place or how small, I have to make that big place seem like it's an intimate nightclub and everybody needs to to feel like they're being sung to only. And I was taught that a long time ago. It's got to be that intimate, no matter how big a venue. And I tried to accomplish that. Yet on screen or on theater, and theater, that's what you're doing with your fellow players. Inclusive and, and reacting from the heart and listening and, and making a story for the audience to be in on. They're not part of it, but they're in on it. And you know, and you have to have camaraderie and love for your others and, and respect each and every actor that's on the stage with you, no matter how small their part. I always look in their eyes. And do you have a preference for one area of entertainment over the other? No. If I can communicate love in any way, in any venue, then that's what I'm here to do because the bottom line is love is love and I want to help people come together with their hearts and my message is positive because I want to have a positive world again. We're in a mess. Yeah. And I mean, this is a scary time. I thought when I was a little girl and uh, JFK was murdered and and we had the Cuban Missile Crisis that this was terrible. Nothing like this. This is horrendous. And it's the most important time to try and bring people's hearts together together and to make them open their eyes and not be so narrow-minded and not have fear of the next person. Now, you've recently performed with your sister, Barbara Streisand, during an eight-city US-Canadian tour and a six-city international tour, performing in iconic venues like the Hollywood Bowl and the O2 Arena. So what was it like to share the stage with her? Well, it was wonderful. You know, my sister and I used to... She taught me how to harmonize when I was a kid, but I hate harmony. I, I have to have somebody <laughs> else do the harmony. I got to sing the straight lines. <laughs> yeah. But, but this is the first time that we performed in public together. And, you know, people say, why, why, why? And, you know, and I, I knew that, you know, you can't expect that to happen until I came to a certain place in my career. Yeah. Because nothing is handed to you. You have to earn your way there. And um, and when this invitation came to be with, with my sister and my nephew, yeah. and it was a family affair. And it was great traveling and having meals and going shopping and going to movies and theater when we weren't working and then sharing the stage with your, with your loved ones. It was a phenomenal experience. Phenomenal. Obviously, you've got Barbara Streisand, who's a pretty famous sister to have. You think? Yeah. <laughs> but you are also a very successful person in your own right. So does it ever annoy you to be kind of introduced, like I did today, partly as the sister of Barbara Streisand? You know, I, I've accepted that that's what it is a long time ago. I can't deny it. That's who I am. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things, but it would be nice if it came at the end. Yeah. And by the way, <laughs> 
Yeah, I did an interview yesterday where the guy was saying, you know, I don't want to talk to her. Like, you know, this is not her sister's interview. This is her interview. Mm. You know, she's got her own persona, her own talent, you know, which is great. You know, I love my sister. I couldn't be more proud of my sister. I was the first president of her first fan club. I used to oh, wow. <laughs> go to Manhattan to the fan club office to sign the certificates and, and yeah. for the fans. So, you know, it's not that I think very little of my sister. I think monumentally of her. Yeah, you know, and she's been um, she's been someone to really look up to in, yeah. in many ways. Even when she uh, talks about politics to me, I mean, she's strong. I'm so proud of her. Mm, so absolutely. Proud. Did you have a very musical upbringing? Given that the two of you both have had similar careers. Well, my my mother used to sing around the house, and something was a time where the three of us sang together. My our mother actually was at the top of the piano. She was the soprano in the family. Yeah. Then my sister and I brought up the bottom. And I still, and today I really like singing in my lower register, more so than all the way up there. I, I encompass all of it, but even this medley, I, I loved doing it in my lower register, you know? So, um, but the, around the house, when we're together and stuff, no, we don't really sing. Yeah. Everybody is amazed at that, but we don't, if we have a holiday thing, we don't do it. I don't, we don't sing in the shower either, unless yeah. I have to warm up my voice for a show. <laughs> yeah, I suppose singing is your job. So who else would sit and do their job at Christmas? Right. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a point there, unless you're singing ca Christmas carols with everybody yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Well, are there any more upcoming projects that you're working on that you can give us a bit of a oh, sneak peek yeah. into? Well, I, you know, I, I, I don't have a time frame on them, but where um, Malik and I are going to be working on a couple of duets, we're hoping to do one for the Latin market. We have another song being written for us by my um, by his friend in uh, Pennsylvania, and and my Stefan, my producer, is working with him on it now. And hopefully, we're going to go. Hopefully, I'm hoping we go to Nashville. That's where Stefan is now. He's in Nashville to go record in his studio, so we can visit. Maybe that maybe that video will be us in the studio perhaps you know recording and um and also there is another group called world's first cinema two guys that are incredibly talented very modern today garnered their own following and i my friend sargon introduced me to them and they are now writing a song for me so that'll be a whole other area i love stretching yeah. i love stretching you know you, you can never learn enough you can so that's in the offing of possible TV. You know, I'm getting, we're working on some ideas and stuff. I love doing um, episodic television, I, you know, comedy. I loved it. And I would do drama too. I like drama. Well, this project is The Medley, which is The Look of Love slash The Island by Rosalind Kind, of course. So where are we able to find that? You're able, I love your accent. Are you Thank Irish? You. It's Did Scottish. Scottish. It's yes. Scottish. Do you wear a kilt? Do you wear a kilt on holidays? The camera only shows my top half, so oh, well, you'll never I know. It's the same. It's the same. <laughs> <laughs> it's a saving grace, isn't it? Oh yes. <laughs> um, where you can find it on um, YouTube, you can see the video. And it's across all the digital boards, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, all the other digital platforms is the song. Excellent. And is there anywhere we are able to keep up to date with you, like social media and websites and things to see what you're doing? I have my website is rosalindkind.com. And I'm also on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. On TikTok, I'm called Robo Rosy. I oh. gave myself a name. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> it's like fun. <laughs> Robo Rosy. But on the others, I'm, just, I'm Rosalind Kind. It's at Rosalind Kind. Excellent. Well, many thanks for joining us. It's been great talking to you today. Thank you, Toby. Uh, this was fun. It was a lovely interview. <laughs>